Mark, welcome to Queen's Park Rangers. How do you feel to be named QPR manager? Delighted. Delighted as a club, but uh, I know very well. As I say, the story here, and I, I came here in your great season of 77, I think it was. Frank McClintock took me to every game here, every home game. So I had that link to the club, enjoyed it very much, and, and learned a lot from Dave Setson in those coaching days. So that's my, my first real football memory. So you know, delighted to be here, privileged to be to managing the club, and um, as I said, looking forward to it. I saw you said recently about Dave Sexton and he was a bit of a, an inspiration towards you in terms of going into coaching. It seems incredible that now here you are as the QPR manager. Yeah, well, it was a privilege for me to know Frank McClintock and watch Frank play after his Arsenal career and come to QPR and the impact he had here. But that famous team, you know, here I was as a young kid and I'm mixing with Stan Bowles and Jerry Francis and Don Masson. For me, it was you know, starstruck, so to speak. But um, watching the coaching as well during the half-time holidays, there's a Bank of England ground at Roehampton to go and watch them and to see the players play. And I watched Dave Sexton coach. It was magnificent for as a young 14, 15 year old. Magnificent for me. So I really enjoyed it. The first real bug into coaching and never forgot those early lessons really. And in those early days, as you say, you're only a teenager. Most teenagers will be looking at the, the players. And even in those early days, you were looking at the, the managerial approach. Not in some clever, foresightful way. It was more a case of uh, how organised it was. I remember the pictures being magnificent. You know, kids' memories. I remember that it rained hard and the water just lay on top of the surface. It was, it was superb. But I watched the drills and the, and the passing drills that he did. And the team were doing so well. So you naturally think to yourself, what is he doing that's causing this, this positive impact? But great to watch and a privilege to be there watching it. And say Frank had open all doors. Access was fantastic for me. So learnt a lot. Really privileged, as I say. And uh, never ever forgot those early lessons. You left Nottingham Forest 18 months ago. And you said recently that in terms of your next job, it needed to be the right one. You had to make the right decision. You've had opportunities that you didn't feel were right at that moment. Why did you feel this was right? So for me, I, I had uh, Nottingham Forest is a magnificent club. Um, felt that uh, the expectation has to be right at a club. Uh, and you get a lot of stick for supporters sometimes for saying that, but it's very, very genuine that you have to build. You have to, if you work with young players, for example, you need to give them time. You can't rush them too quickly. And it's making sure their progress is appropriate, it's making sure the foundations are put into place. So some of the club's expectations are to be in a playoffs immediately or we must get promotion. That's fine if it's right for the club and the budgets are right, etc. Um, but there's been one or two clubs, it just wasn't right. I looked overseas, I went to the MLS, spent time over there, keen to learn about different markets. Um, but with QPR, when you speak to them and you spoke to the owners, it was very, very clear they had a plan, they know what they want. Um, it was a really solid plan and it's a long-term outlook and it appealed to me immediately. So. Obviously, speaking to the staff, getting a really good feeling, and uh, I'm excited by the challenge that lies ahead. And look, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days. That's football, that's working with young players. But if you can put that structure into place that they can benefit from, then hopefully we have a lot of good days ahead. You say, speaking to the board, they know what they want. What is it that they've told you they want? Well, obviously, the club has been well documented, the situation, financial situation in the club. So we have to pull back in certain areas and we have to trust the academy. Chris Ramsey and his staff doing a magnificent job in the academy, the young players coming through. Obviously he's always as at the weekend and there's other boys coming through in and around the first team making an impact. Uh, so it's using them, it's using the loan market wisely uh, and making sure we build something. You need two or three senior players, two or three mentors on and off the pitch. So if you can get the balance right within the squad, then you're in a good place. And it takes time to bed in, of course it does, but pre-season is vitally important for us. And to get the belief around the camp, there's a really good vibe about the club, I'm sure, but it's making sure we enhance that and strengthen it in key areas, make small tweaks, small details, which, uh, which help the players. Uh, and the, that belief factor is so, so very important. The championships are demanding league, and you have to make sure the belief is there, the unity is there, and hope the training work on the pitch is, is done appropriately. You have a big history working at academy level before going into senior management. Is that something that excites you, particularly now at QPR, where there will be that reliance, if you like, on bringing those younger players through. I love seeing young players do well. You know, you love it when they come to the academy. It's a hard system. Don't forget, by the time the boy gets signed as a young scholar, he's come through a tough academy system, done really well, the challenges that you face, especially the bigger clubs. So it's great watching those young players make that step into full-time football and how they deal with the challenges that are there. Uh, and again, they have good days and bad days, and you have to make sure you're there for them. Uh, I'm on the shoulder at the right time and a stern word at another time, but it's that balance to get it right, to give them the best chance to maximise their potential. They're talented young players, and not everyone will be good enough to go out there and grace, grace Loftus Road, but you have to make sure you give everyone the best chance possible. Les Ferdinand is the Director of Football here at QPR. Of course, you worked previously as Sporting Director at Brentford uh, with Uwe Rossler, so you have a, a real understanding of the relationship between the, 
director of football and the manager. How key is that relationship? It's hugely important. I can't emphasize enough how, how, how vital it is for the club that that relationship is appropriate. And the manager has to feel, um, so with Uwe, Uwe for example, he had to feel that I was there for him. He had to know that I would be the man that goes to the board and speaks to him. I always had his back. I've no doubt Les would be the same. You know, Les is there to help me wherever possible. The better the club does as a whole, we all, we all benefit accordingly. So um, I go to Les, you know, and I always speak honestly, always speak respectfully. Um, and whatever you do, you hope it's for the good of the team. It's all about the first team out there on the pitch, making sure the fans come here and entertained. They have to enjoy spending their money, enjoy following their team, and that's our job. I think sometimes you lose sight of the fact you're in the entertainment industry and you have to go make sure on a Saturday afternoon they enjoy coming off this road. Go for any club. So that relationship, director of football, hugely significant, making sure that it's honest, it's transparent. He knows, Les knows I'll always be there working for the good of the team and vice versa. And I'm sure going forward in the weeks and months ahead, it'll, it'll grow and expand accordingly. What is your footballing philosophy? I love, I love seeing players that uh, enjoy the football. I love seeing players that are not threatening, who can dominate a football. Um, players who uh, can deal with a mistake, don't get weighed down by a mistake. Everyone's human, you only ever learn from making a mistake. So it's not being reckless, it's being brave in possession. Um, understanding first thought to play forward, to be positive, to split units. Um, attacking philosophy, work ethic has to be right, the desire has to be there. You know, and, and you have to be fit as well. You have to that, that work side of it is so vitally important. You look at the best teams, they're awfully fit. Look at Liverpool last night, how fit they were. Fantastic football, great goals, great atmosphere. How fit were Liverpool? They were fitter than Barcelona last night. So that side of it, that work ethic, desire, hunger, passion, all those old cliche words are so so important for us. So get that right and, and fingers crossed we move in the right direction. The players are having a break right now, but what can they expect when they return? Uh, I hope they expect organisation, you know, they get their schedules, they know what they're doing every day, four weeks in advance, they know what every session is, how we're going to work it, it's all geared towards our pattern of play, our philosophy of play. Every session they should be able to look at it and see why we've done it. If not, knock on the door. I don't mind that, I've got no problem with the player knocking on the door and saying, I've no idea what happened there, Gaffer. Fine, do it in the right way and we'll explain it. Do it the wrong way and we'll have a different discussion. But um, it's important, they need to know that if they're not sure about something, come and ask. We do analysis every day, you know, short 10, 12, 15 minute bursts will be done for their benefit because a lot of work will be done in the classroom as well as on the grass. So again, get that, get that balance right. Make sure the player leaves the training ground every day feeling that he's better for it. They come to work, here's great, be here every two weeks. You're at the training ground every day. So we have to get that environment right at Arlington. And what can the um, fans expect from you? I hope they can see uh, an outstanding work ethic from the team. I hope they see a dynamism and intensity to the play. I hope they understand what we're trying to do. We're trying to look after the football, take care of the football, um, create chances. It's all about creating chances. Possession's irrelevant. It's about creating chances. And our job is to, is to create really positive chances in the attacking third, to maximise those chances and to defend well as a team. You know, to press to get the ball back quickly, to win the ball back and to play again and take care of it. So I'm sure you'll speak to X number of managers up and down the country and coaches who will tell you the same thing. Our job is to put that into practice. Just finally, how excited are you? Yeah, very excited. And it's um, up to the point of leaving for us, I've never not worked in my life. And uh, you know, another Premier League manager, well, a Premier League manager said to me, take a break. And, no, I want to work, I want to work. But actually the break's been good. You know, I've travelled, I've learned, I've done a lot of stuff. The LMA have been outstanding. Do stuff for the FA on the pro license courses and present, etc. And they challenge you. You, do, you write various reports, but it does allow you to recharge. And, it, and until you've done that, it sounds a really boring statement, but actually having always worked my life, you get to a certain point where the, the rest does you good, and now you're hungry, now you want to do it. But as I say, your earlier question, you want to commit yourself to a project. You want to commit yourself to a six month and then move on. It's, you want a project where you know a lot of work can be put in and hopefully everyone can benefit accordingly.